Hi everyone, welcome to Catch and Dinner. Today, we're not catching anything, but we're preparing something that we've caught. So here we have some goose, and uh, you know, Canadian goose that we've gotten. And what we're doing today is doing one of my favorite, which, you know, I'm, I really love Rubens, and Rubens involves some kind of corn beef. And what we're doing here is corning goose. So very different spin on it. I don't know anyone other than my friend who introduced me to it that does it. Even the people that sell the kits for corning, usually it's beef or you know, you could do venison obviously, moose, you name it. But they've never said geese and I don't know anybody else that does it, but I tell you something, wait until you try it. This is pretty awesome. See this is not like, people think of goose like it would be dry or greasy, but it's really none of that. The way we do it, we get basically just the meat out of it. And I'll show you in a second as far as the preparation, preparation, but it's very easy. And uh, geese are actually not your typical waterfowl in that they really go in the fields and eat grass and different things. So some people will call them flying ribeyes for that reason, because look at the meat. I mean, this meat looks like, you know, who would guess that this is goose? I mean, it looks like beef, venison, you name it. There's no real extra dark color or anything like that and we keep the thighs too. The thighs we basically, uh, you'll see, we'll put it in a crock pot. It comes out real tender. I mean obviously the to, to actually make a Reuben and all that we'll use basically mainly the breast but these I'm not gonna waste the meat so the way we cook it it still turns out great and uh, you can you know chew on it like a drumstick. It's phenomenal. The meat is very flavorful but you would never guess that it's goose because again, they really are different as far as the waterfowl go. And uh, they're great for this recipe. So let me just show you what we're doing here. We're using Eldon's corn meat kit and uh, we'll put it in the description. I mean, there's a website for these guys. We're not being sponsored by them in any which way. It's just that's the kit I've been using. I love it, turns out great. And it's so simple, that's the best part. This is super simple. So all there is to it is a kit like this, you can make up to 30 pounds. Here we're making half a batch and they make it so you can do that very easily. That's for one batch of about 15 pounds, so this makes up to 30. So you basically take half of the curing salt, you take half of this, half of the pickling spices, you take half of this, and then they have two of these, we'll just use one of those, but there's two of these in one of those kit. And, uh, You'll see, we'll mix it later, it's very simple. But first, before we get there, let me just show you what I do to the breast. Because, you know, the thigh is pretty easy. I just kind of trim, you know, looking at thigh. I just obviously pull the skin off. I don't skin any of this, or pull the feathers. I just skin them, and then you'll have some very nice meat. And then I just make sure there's, you know, just meat left. So that's how I prepared it, very easy. It's basically just a drumstick. And then, for the breast, Obviously, we just breasted the, those geese, so we cut right in the middle, take the breasts on both sides, those are half breasts, and let me just show you how I prepare them. So what you're left with is nice morsels like that. You don't want them to be too thick so they can, the, the curing kit can work great. If it's too thick, I mean, it's not going to do as good of a job, so they even specified that in the instruction, but those are fine. So basically what I do, I cut it in half, so can you see Allison, yes. if I show you here? All right. So this would be the outside, this the inside. That's why here you have the arteries and everything. So what I do, I cut those half breasts in half again. So I'll go like so. And then what I'll do is when I free the, freeze these, I leave the skin on because I think it preserves better. It might or might not, but that's just something I do. So they can preserve better. I freeze them nice and tight. Now I obviously thawed them, those are not fresh. So what I'm doing now is just stripping some of this, you know, silver skin and just leaving almost pure meat. I mean, you can't just leave pure meat, but generally speaking, I mean, if you see, it's mainly meat, you know. So, so I go like this, I don't go all the way through because I'm gonna, you know, like you would with the fish when you get the skin off, that's what I'm doing here. I'm staying thin, but I'm just slight angle to the knife and I'm basically just removing the, uh, that little silver skin, little covering there. See, you're left with just nice meat. And then the other side, same kind of deal. So that's one side that I just did. The other side, more of the same. This is pretty 
thin stuff, so I just tried to leave as, you know, as much meat as possible. I'm trying to really remove just that little film. You know, it's not too tedious here. It's very easy, actually. You need a sharp knife. The other side, so as you can see, it's pretty easy. You know, if there's any meat that looks like it might have been a little freezer burn or it's a little darker, I'll strip that too, but once you remove this layer, that's another reason I like to leave the layer of that silver skin is get then you don't lose as much the meat is ready to go I mean you take that silver skin off and look, look at that look at that nice meat and you know it's ready look at that so uh, you know to the pile do the same on this side I'll uh, remove the uh, that little bit of you know however you want to call it silver skin filament and it's very thin. It, this is not meat, you know. People might think I'm losing a lot, and then there's still a little bit left that didn't come off. So I just, I mean, as as little as possible, you just try to remove that s slight layer, because it might be fine. But again, I'm pretty particular. So same here. That's where the artery comes out. So more of the same here. I just remove that little bit of layer. You can even go underneath it. And you can't remove all of it, but you're just trying to remove the bulk. I mean, you don't want to drive yourself uh, crazy here, but so yeah. And then that little bit. And that's good to go. Okay, we're done prepping here. So I don't know if you can see. I got all the thighs ready to go. The breast. Again, I just tried to strip as much of that silver skin off. Cut it in half. Next step is to create the solution. So as I was saying earlier, we're gonna take this fully. We're gonna dump that. What's that one called? This is the corn meat seasoning. There's a little bit of everything in there. Okay. Yep. So what I'll do, follow me here. I'm gonna put it. So what we have here is how many cups, Allison? Uh, 12 cups, three quarts. Okay. So I'm just going to dump this in the water, so 12 cups, and then the curing salt, we're going to do a half too. So again, nothing uh, to go crazy about here. See, I'm just splitting it in half, going like this, and then I can just cut a corner of one, and then I'll have about half, you know, I mean, that's, I'm just trying to half it. I mean, if somebody who's, you know, trying to be more precise, I mean, you I can tried, measure it. We can measure it, but I'd rather just eye it because it's really, I mean, right here, this half, go like that, like this, like this, and then I'll just cut that corner. I can cut the whole thing, it'll be easier. And it'll, it'll come. So what I'll do is just bend it here and just dump this half. Good go, we still have the other half for next time because we're going to do more. Now we're left with the other half. And we're going to do the same with the pickling spices. So again, try to, to make sure that it's all pretty much, you know, homogeneous. It's all mixed up pretty good because you don't want all the se certain seasoning on one side and you know, one's on the other. But that looks pretty good to me. So same kind of deal. So I'm going to go like this. Tip it over. Yeah, let's try to make it as close to half as possible, obviously. That's about it right there. And then, again, just gonna cut the top so I can preserve the, you know, the rest of it. It's very easy, like I said. I mean, this is as simple as it gets, and the results is just unbelievable. I mean, the Again, you could do venison, you could do, you know, other things, but... Bear, moose, yeah. beef. So I'm just going to mix it. You know, you want it to be pretty much, uh, you know, no chunks left. So... We're using this cooler. You could use anything plastic. They say nothing metallic. So for me, it's easy. I'll just put this in the fridge for seven days. So you let it be for seven days. That's good. 
So what I'll do here is I have a fridge that I age meat. So I have plenty of space to just put this in the fridge. You know, if it's cool enough, depending on, on the weather, you know, you could put it in the garage if it's cool enough. But here I can do it in a controlled environment in that extra fridge that I use to uh, age our meat. So I'm just going to make this tight. We will see you in a week. I'll be stirring this once a day. And then we'll see you in a week for the next part. We'll be using the crock pot to uh, cook this up. And I'll show you how I store the meat after. See you soon. Okay. I've let it sit for a week. I mixed it every day to make sure that all the pieces of meat would get the juices and would basically be infused. So now the next step is to cook the stuff. So I'm using the crock pot. I just found that it works better personally. The directions on Eldon says to use, you know, just simmer it on, in a pot, you know, for hours. I just find the crock pot to work great and makes the meat really tender. So that's what I'm using. So here I have two types of crock pot. I got this, you know, traditional looking crock pot and then I'm separating the meat. So here I have all the breasts, as you can see. So those are all the, yeah, half breasts. And then in the other one, I put all the, the thighs. So this is an Instapot. It works the same. There's a crock pot setting, slow cook, and I'm going to use that just for the sake of not having to do two separate batches and take more time. But you, you see how it turned out? The meats get that little color that, you know, remind you of uh, corn. But it's going to get even more amplified once we start cooking it. So what I do, I make sure there's enough juices, obviously. And with the juices that I have there, might not be enough between the two pots. So what I'll do here is add a little water to the uh, leftover brine. And I'll just mix it, then I'll dump it. That should be enough, really. And it's not going to dilute it so much. This stuff's pretty salty. So it's actually not a bad thing. So it doesn't make the meat, you know, extra salty. So again, just over time, I've done this a few times. So I just found these little tricks and... Uh, I'll keep adding if I keep losing water. I want to make sure that you know the brine is to the top. And then at the end, when I put the meat in the freezer, I don't just put it without the juices. I make sure there's some juices so it keeps it nice and uh, you know well hydrated so it doesn't dry up. And uh, that's the plan. So here I already had put some of the juices. So here I'm just going to top it off. Hmm. Should be good. Let me put some in the other one. All right, now I'm gonna dump some in here. Feeling this should work pretty good. Yeah. You gotta fully cover it. Yeah, that's pretty good there. Okay, now it's pretty easy. I just have to turn it on. Now there's different settings. I haven't timed it exactly. This might take a little different time than the other because those are thighs and those are the breasts. So I'll uh, put it on high and you know, it'll take a few hours, obviously. I'll keep checking on it. The meat should very be very tender. That's the whole idea is I want it to be nice and tender. It should not feel, uh, you know, fork-wise. If it feels really stiff, I just keep it going. Let it go until it uh, doesn't have the consistency. But, you know, typically, you know, I might, in this setting, it might take five, six hours. And, uh, you know, same with the other one. But we'll see. We'll let you know. Okay. Here we are. Just uh, finished cooking it. It's very, very tender. We let it go maybe a little bit longer than usual. I mean, the meat comes apart just like I would expect it. Sometimes in the past, we would uh, not let it go as long, but Allison prefers it so it comes apart easy to make sandwiches. Personally, in the past, I would make it so I could slice it a little bit easier. So, but this is so tender right now. I mean, see, I'll just come, I mean, yeah. It will fall, I mean, falls apart, but very, very tender. It'll be perfect to make uh, sandwiches and Reuben, so we have enough tonight for tonight right here, and uh, we'll show you. So these, what we do, a lot of times we'll just thaw them and just eat them like that, or again, you can make sandwiches. Wow. Hey, that's perfect. Most people have never guessed, if we were to taste it, they would never guess this goose. It's just phenomenal. I mean, I like it even better because there's no fat. People think geese are fat. People said they've had goose and it's a little fatty whatever but once you just skin them and remove that fat and you're left with just the meat it's phenomenal I mean this meat is just I mean to die for unbelievable and most people would never guess that this is goose and when you taste it I promise you I mean it tastes like beef but even better no fat and it's just tender and just what meat should taste like so we're gonna make some Rubens and show you the finished product 
here we are the final step before the meal Allison is putting together this Reuben so what we use is you know pumpernickel bread some nice sauerkraut and then she basically uh, like I had it earlier with the meat all kind of broken apart and pulled apart a little Swiss cheese now some people like to use uh, Thousand Island which I do like but Allison doesn't really like it so we're just gonna use mustard today but uh, sometimes you know I'll use the uh, Thousand Island so look at that just like that we have a nice meal here we are one of my favorite meal I mean just a piece of art here like Allison was showing earlier you know a little pulled corn goose and sauerkraut and of course some uh, Swiss cheese so this is one of my favorite just in general even before I found this recipe I just always loved Rubens and now that we've made this corn goose it's I mean it's my go-to uh, comfort food so let's try it but it I already turned it uh, tried to meet earlier and it's phenomenal I mean this unbelievable one of the best batch we ever made hmm. can't beat it I mean, Swiss cheese, sauerkraut, and that goose with the pumpernickel. It's... So I took the meat out, put it in little bags, you know, size that we can uh, make some nice uh, Rubens with. And the last step will be uh, I just took it out, let the fluids cool. I'm just going to take some of the fluids so it keeps it a little bit more moist when it's frozen. I mean, those are pretty good bags. I'm not too worried about freezer burns with this, but still, I'm gonna take some of the fluids and make it so it's kind of submerged in there, keeps it nice and moist when we thaw it. So that'll be the last step. So I won't show you because it's pretty obvious. You know, I'm just gonna put the juices, the brine, seal it. Enjoy.